A former squatter who once shared every trivial peeve, any un unformed thought is um any um any any un unformed thought is suddenly sharing nothing at all, and that can be pretty disorienting for anyone who sunk who sunk the mental energy into the man now living in silent exile. A loose collection of consults, fact checkers, academics and uh, academics and voters who couldn't look away from for professional and personal reasons is now claim is uh, acclimating to the new Trumpless reality, and they're going for long walks and sleeping through the night, and they can look at their phone without dreading that he may have shattered an alliance or provoked a war. I feel that I've been released from a hostage situation," said Sherry Berman, who's a political science professor at Bar at Barnard um, College who studies democracies and has written about um, about about Donald Trump. I've really enjoyed um, spending a lot of time on Bernie Sanders memes and obsessing about and obsessing about the GameStop rather than Donald Trump. Matt Gertz, a senior fellow at the Democratic Watchdog Group Media Matters for America, led a life that in some ways paralleled that of the 45th squatter. By tracking Trump's tweets and, manage, and, and matching them to faux news segments, he showed the degree to which Trump's thinking is shaped by conservative television news. Um, that called for, for what they call thoroughly inhabiting the former squatter's world. When Trump tweeted, Gertz would get in, in, in instantaneous alerts Basically, it would be with other people, and he'd instantly pull out his phone. And basically, Gertz said they would shrug and sigh and say, "What did he do this time?" Then Gertz would have to scrounge through faux broadcasts to see what Trump might have been watching that set him off. And that became the day-to-day -day routine. Gertz said he was watching faux news while sitting in front of the television and tweeting about it, and I was watching faux news while sitting in front of the television and tweeting about him tweeting about it. Is there a hole in your life now? I asked. An emptiness with Trump gone? No, he said. It's great. I wake up. I go for a walk with my family. I don't need to worry about the squatter. About what? I don't have to worry about. I don't need to worry that the squatter is going to tweet something and I need to rush back to my house to, to look at what he said. Um, Trump will be back, of course. Um, today was the start. Was the, um today the Senate holds an impeachment trial over his role in the Capitol insurrection. Even if he doesn't speak publicly, he'll be thrust back into the national spotlight. And what's more. <clears throat> Trump Trumpism seems to be metastasizing. A band of congressional acolytes is the newest avatar for the conspiracism and grievance that fueled Trump's movement. Yet he's not on Twitter, and that makes a difference. Sarah Longwell, the founder of the Republican the Republican Accountability Accountability Project, and an ardent Trump critic, said, "But he's all these mini me's, and the craziness is still there." Um, Trump's Trump's successor likely isn't sorry to see him sidelined. At a news at the news briefing last week, Joe Biden's press secretary, Jan Psaki, got a question about whether the work goes more smoothly when Trump says mute, says stays mute. And this may be hard to believe, but we don't spend a lot of time talking about or thinking about about the squatter Trump here. The former squatter, the former squatter Trump, to be very clear, Psaki replied, "The former squatter, the ideal still still takes some getting used to." Lan Fonti, a playwright and theater critic in the Syracuse, New York area, described Trump as an as an addiction even for those of us who can't stand him. In the mornings, Fonti said he would rush to the television to hear MSNBC, MSNBC's Joe Scarborough screaming about him. I had to start I had to start weaning myself away from all that for for a respite. He returned to the Great British Bacon Show just so he could focus on something more benign. A disclaimer, my wife has me watching the same show and an episode featuring a tarp-making competition was indeed a mind-clearing diversion. For those who, um, for those whose work routine centered around Trump, the void he's left, the void he's left is even more jarring. And Mike Elgin, a tech writer, estimates that he sent thousands of tweets over the years in response to Trump's feed. One goal was to send them out quickly, and within seconds of Trump tweeting, it was the hope that Trump supporters would read them and he'd be swayed by whatever counter-argument that he was being offered. But Trump was just a massive time and energy suck on so, that, that that sucked um was just a massive time and energy suck on so many people, including myself. Elgin had said, "I was just thrilled when they tossed him off Twitter." Does he think his writings had any influence on Trump voters? One of the stressful things about this was that I felt like I had no effect on his followers. Elgin said they felt just perfectly impenetrable, impenet impen impenetrable and immune to argumentation. And with Trump and and with Trump gone, basically. And but even though he was, even though with, but when he, when he was in power, Nick Shapiro lived on a hair trigger. He runs a he runs a crisis management shop in San Francisco called the Tenth Avenue Consulting, and he had the prep had the prep scenarios that he once considered utterly implausible. At any time, for any reason, the leader of the free world might pick a fight with an American citizen or company. 
One of one of his services was to was to was to gird the clients, such as the former CIA director and Trump foil John Brennan. For instance, when Trump irrationally tweets against you, and then suddenly you have the maggot crowd bearing down on you, he t he said, "He no longer does the Shapiro, um, a former Obama administration official." And basically, they need to puzzle through a possible response. I don't know any client worried about President Biden rage tweeting about them. He said, but with Trump, you started your day with him and ended your day with him. And in between, you had to continue to monitor what he was doing. Um, when Trump was was well, when Trump is an hour by hour pre uh, preoccupation, preoccupation, he shuts off possibilities for more constructive work. Angie Drobnik, um, Angie Drobnik Holen is the editor in chief of the PolitiFact, and a national fact-checking website that found Trump made scores of pants on virus falsehoods throughout the years. And with Biden envisioning a full legislative agenda, she expects to her staff of 15 will devote more time to the debates unfolding on Capitol Hill. One of the fundamentals of misinformation is it distracts from pr from, from productive conversation. Holland told me we um, we would be fact-checking misinformation that started on the internet and then it aired on phone news and then got repeated by, by Trump instead of a debate on public policy that might result in legislation that would help somebody else. Um, exhausting doesn't do the do, doesn't do the past four years justice, Holland added. Um, I'm trying to think of a more tiring word, and relieved as many may be that the Trump watchers are under no illusion that he's going away entirely. Maybe he'll resurface as soon as the impeachment trial or next year during the midterm elections, or maybe he'll run for president again in 2024 and once again monopolize the country's attention. Hopefully not. Um, perhaps he'll simply get bored and resume phoning into the insanity. Around 3.30 a.m. on Inauguration Day, Fonte woke up and checked his phone. No headlines to worry about. He said, oh my God, he thought Trump's gone and I could sleep now. And for how long is anyone's guess? The monster is still in the closet. He says, it's just that he's not coming out tonight.